All right, Rivers, good to have you back. As you can see, the RMA King of Armor Armament, right, came in. And if you remember correctly, we were working on the idea of a lightweight, keep it simple, stupid, right? Things I love. I love keeping it simple, and I kind of enjoy stupid sometimes. And sometimes I kind of am, but that's beside the point. Anyway, keep it simple, stupid, keep it light, keep it just usable, no, don't hang everything, including an espresso maker, none of that, right? And as you can see, we got, well, we got our RMA plate in. Yep, it's about an inch and an eighth thick. It's made out of ceramic and some poly stuff and some other magical, mystical materials they probably won't tell us about and all that kind of thing. Check out their website. As you can see, this is the model 1155. It's a 10 by 12. I think they might make a bigger one, but it didn't seem like that was an option right now, or at all. I don't know. You have to go check. But uh, we wanted to keep this light and simple anyway. I do prefer one that, say, is more around the 14 inches long because I'm a little bit bigger. But this will do the trick and, pr and protect what it needs to and stay lighter. It's a level 4, as you can see, and it's NIJ certified. Uh, and it has, uh, let's see... A 10-year warranty. That is pretty bitchin'. If you haven't seen this stuff get abused, as you can see, they didn't send me a blam. Bummer, RMA. But if you can, do it. Send me a blam. Until then, let's just keep saving up. If you guys want to donate, donate to my PayPal. Let's get some plates. I want to get one of each kind of plate and test it for you all with different kinds of stuff. And I want you to put input on what you want tested on it, too. Until we have it blown all up, right? Now... Instead of, let's get into what we're doing here. We got the plate, though. We got at least one good plate here. We got another one that's already in, as you can see. And it's a it's stiff, and it's a single curve. This was $149 a plate. They had a sale at the time, so it might be a little less. They also make a double curve that curves this way and this way, right? Because that's the strike face. And uh, it was $169. So as you can see, it doesn't break the bank. It's not the lightest stuff, though, man, and I'll tell you about the weight here in a little bit, but it's about an inch and an eighth thick, and uh, it makes for a nice tight fit in here. So, that being said, here is the trauma plate. Now, some people, you don't need it. Those can stand alone, but some people like the idea of a trauma plate. I like the idea of a trauma plate because if you get hit with something like a shotgun or a big caliber rifle, something like that, because that is uh, certified to stop multiple hits of .30-06, armor piercing right as well as multiple hits from anything below that so that being said well those kind of things tend to put a little bit of an ouch on what they call backside deformation where the bullet makes a bulge in the backside well that backside can do things like give you serious bruises hurt your insides a little bit maybe even crack a rib etc so having a little extra you know protection from that now this isn't a ballistic plate some are, but this one isn't, uh, so it doesn't have any ballistic capabilities. It has absorption capabilities, and some of them even have cool absorption uh, capabilities like uh, 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 non-Newtonian solid type material uh, that the harder it's hit, the more resistance it gives. That's pretty cool, but this is just a regular old kind of a, a, a durable, heavy-duty quarter-inch pad, right? So we'll set that aside. Now, as you can see, this was our Rothko Lightweight. It's been around for a little while, so it's had some track testing through there. There hasn't been any really bad things. Some guys who put it through a lot of use can find that the stitching may start to go here, but they were able to repair that themselves. And quite honestly, anything you put to good heavy use is going to have wear, and you're going to find its weak spots. And as long as you know how to repair them, you can deal with that. But all in all, it's a really good unit. And the idea was for it to be as low profile and as simple as you could so it this has built-in magazine holders if you remember right so this bottom pocket here as you can see i can put magazines in it, it has little bungees or little slots in there that it fits in right i can carry up to three mags and it's all part of this so i don't have to hang anything on the front to make my armor project outwards any further right and it's retained in by these little bungee things, which most people are, com are used to if they've dealt with army surplus type stuff. So this way I don't have to add a bunch of stuff on here. Now, as you can see, we put, um, well, I, I like doing this. I, I, I just love this little headlamp. This one's from Wally, Wally World, believe it or not. It's like $19. It has different high-low setting. 
it has red, blue for tracking blood and other biologicals. And I think it also has a, an IR setting in here, if I remember right. Uh, but the red is good for low light if you want to be reading a map, not draw a lot of attention. All I did was on the Molly itself, I have two zip ties, as you can see right there, that zip tied it together. And you can see I did it in an angle, so that way it keeps it from sliding and moving around, right? See how solid that is? And then I just put, I took the headband off and I put a rubber band in here to just kind of keep it from flopping when I don't want it to. But as you can see, even with that on, I can just flop it down and that goes right out of the way. Pretty cool, huh? But you want to carry some extra band or rubber bands because rubber bands go bad after a while. And that's what you can do inside this little admin pocket is I put the headband in here. And I put some rubber bands in there. And then I still have my slots for my magazine for my sidearm, right? Or in this case, my chest arm, right? And that keeps it simple too. I don't have to add anything more to the front. And all that is is this simple condor. As you can see, it has Velcro on it. So you can Velcro it in place. That way you can test your cant where you want it. Then you set this up. And, it, and then as you can see, I put zip ties so that it doesn't accidentally get ripped off of my chest or fall off of my chest under hard work. And uh, it just slides in there like that and comes around and that just keeps it in place. Look at that, isn't that cool, right? I think that's pretty cool. So that's it, that's the basics. Now, you can always add to it, like I told you before, by putting, say you have a situation where you need more than three mags and you know it ahead of time, you can simply molly this on really quick and uh, put two more mags in there so now you'd have a total of five and plus one in your gun and if some of you carry an extra one on your gun that'd be another one and it can add two pistol mags as well as an admin pouch that you can put things like fire starters uh signaling mirrors um you know your basic survival type gear and we'll go over that in a future video but i'm not going to keep it on here as a permanent it's going to be an add-on as needed we're trying to keep this simple so in keeping it simple one thing i think all of them must have it's got to have a tourniquet right because if you're wearing one of these it's quite possible you might get a leak and you want people to stop that leak so as you can see this says tq that means tourniquet and it just simply mollied onto my side cummerbund belt there and it opens up and you set it in as you can see i've staged my tourniquet if you don't know what that is go check out my tourniquet staging video or go check out the one bear independent does it's a great one he's he's a wealth of information gotta tell you solid dude and check out how to stage your tourniquet so it's ready for you to one-handedly, if nobody's around, you can pull this loose, get it over a limb, and get it cinched on, right? Before you lose all your, your uh, transmission fluid, right? So then you just take this and flip it over like that. And now you know that there's a tourniquet there. Now there's some things coming in the mail or in my first aid kit that I have to find. Uh, my box of first aid stuff, right? Not my kid. I know where it is. But everything else uh, that I store as backup, there's a couple things I want to add to this, but not much. Simple things that you might lead to stop leaks that can fit in this. It won't be an IFAC, but it'll be a leak stopper. Let's just call it that, right? So, so you can see how you put that on with Molly. I also believe that you should have communication, right? Whether that's your phone, whether that's a radio, whatever you throw in here, you need to be able to communicate with people to let them know that, are you still okay? Is the problem handled? Do you need help, right? Should they run because you're going down, right? That kind of stuff. Let's hope that's not the case. But here's how you do it. You With your molly, you take your first one, you put it through the first one. Now the space here is that strap there on the, on the actual radio carrier. So you slide this through here like this, all right? And you cinch it up. And this can be kind of tough to do sometimes. Especially if it's one that has like three or four of these on there. But this is only a two uh, molly situation. So there, once you got it through there, then your next one is going through here. And on this one, it's simple. Because once you've got it through there, this simply just snaps over like this. Because it's not long enough to reach this next one. Now, if it was a four one, it would basically just go through this your your carrier your uh, radio carrier again and then you would run it through this and inside of this little area here the snaps would snap together right there you'd have to kind of that's where it gets difficult you shove one end in and then you kind of have to fidget it and snap it right but that's how molly works roughly shortly right 
Now, the nice thing about this carrier is it is lightweight. The straps are, 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 are thin yet wide enough to be comfortable. They have this uh, here so you can carry radio wires or water, which I will be putting a hydro pack of some sort or some sort of water giving device uh, on the back uh, and running a hose through here so that I can hydrate myself, which is super important. Something that I don't do very well, I admit it, my doctor knows it, and that's one of the reasons why I've been having problems is, is I'm not hydrating enough. So I can't tell you guys how much enough, how much importance it is in getting hydrated. You have to hydrate yourself. So that being said, remember that, make sure to figure for that. But for right now, we're not putting it on this because I can just grab a water bottle if need to, but I will be doing something like that and then watch out for it in future videos, right? As well as how to adjust this thing completely once you've got the plates in it. So, that being said, let's get the plates in it. So, what we want to do, we got the front plates in. We want to open this up like this. And we want to take this strap here, fold it out of the way. That strap there, fold it out of the way. Shut this again, right? Flip this forward out of our way. And here's our back, right? Now, we're going to take and open this compartment up right here. And you'll see it flaps down with this. And it's got this nice kind of like water resistant or waterproof, whatever you want to call it, rubberized stuff in there. That's a great sign. I was so glad to see that because sometimes some of your cheaper stuff doesn't come with it. So that's what's really great about this. You can see it's nice and breathable material. It's got a little bit of stretch to it, and that's good because we're going to need it. This is a tough, tough fit. So what you do is you just get it started in here, and you have to kind of work from side to side and get it past that first hump right kind of use your 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 pelvis here to kind of push things in right and you kind of just work it down now sometimes you can kind of just do the shake thing like this holding on to that strap and get it shook down all the way in there look at that now that it shook all the way to the top you can get it a final pull push and tuck now that wasn't too bad but i've done this a couple times so it's got a nice tight fit which is good so things don't move around but as you can see we've got a gap of about an inch to an inch and a half down here at the bottom we'll cover that in a future video for time's sake but i've got a cool little cheap way that we're going to fix that so that this plate doesn't start riding down in here now that space is there basically to a, to allow for a longer plate right but we're going to take up that space because we want that plate to ride up where it's supposed to be you could probably cinch this all the way up in here and find a way to kind of get it to stay that way. But I think I've got a better solution. So that being said, we're gonna fold this in and, cause there'll still be space doing it that way. And we're gonna just, oh wait, we forgot about the trauma pad, duh. So we're gonna open this back up again. And the trauma pad, it's kind of like you're doing your pillow at home. So we're gonna put this, that's the face forward. And we're gonna get in here and we're gonna grab it. And just like we do with a pillow, we're going to slide it forward, push, push, tuck, tuck. Don't let it get curled up on you like that, like I started to, right? And we're going to push and push and flatten and flatten and kind of work it into the corners like this, right? Look at that, right? And there we have it. We're good to go. And we'll deal with that other gap later. Then you just fold this back under get it all lined up where it's supposed to be let's see here yep there we go now we're good to go now we'll flip this back open this back up flip the cummerbund parts back And then we'll look at the back of this just for a second. And we'll go over this too in a future video, so stay tuned. But as you can see on the back side here, it's got these bungees, these shock cords. All right, that's what it's called, shock cord. And when they come, they come on the furthest setting out here for the biggest guys out there. And it comes set loose, right? So you're going to want to set it tighter. So I moved it in one more set of webbing. And I not only made it the weave through here a little bit tighter and cinched up my knots, um, but I did the weave a little bit differently than they do it so that you get some good shock on there, some stretchability, right, to keep it snug and uh, kind of give you, as you move and bend down and that kind of stuff, 
this will flex to allow movement as well, right? Because you don't want to feel like you're in a cummerbund, like a serious one, like a corset, right? You don't want to be a, like a corset. You want some shock in there. So I hope, and as you can see, this got a rear drag thing and everything. This is a nice lightweight unit. Now, here's the important part. How much did this weigh just the plates and the carrier with the just the pistol holder uh, sheath, the, uh, the flashlight, and these things here without the tourniquet. So basically stripped down, this came in at 19 pounds, right? So that's not too bad. It's not the lightest out there. It's probably about, oh, I'd say, you know, five to eight pounds lighter than the expensive stuff or heavier, but still, that's not too bad. And with the gear in it, bullets, magazines, magazines for the pistol, um, and uh, a radio and a flashlight in here, we came in just over 25 pounds, 26 pounds right in there uh, on the scale. So that's what you need to figure for. I'm going to be going out and starting out. Well, I've been doing walks with Benny out there, just me and him walking, having fun. Next comes walking with the stripped unit. And then I'm going to start adding things to it, like the magazines, guns, and all that kind of weight. Then I'm going to add my water uh, bladder. Instead of carrying it with me, I'm going to put it on my back. I'll, we'll find one back here. And that being said, if you guys know of a good Molly hookup type of, um, uh, what do you call it, assault bag or